Yes, and of course, we have our guest in the studio, and we're about to kickstart this conversation. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. So our guest today is Tolu Joseph. Tolu Joseph is an advocate for sound mental health. She is passionate about enlightening people on how to enjoy all-round mental freedom and to live together in peace and harmony. She is a meticulous writer and admits the published and unpublished articles she has written, and the rest is, is her debut book, a book she wrote based on her on her over 20 years experience of the enuresis disorder. Uh, after realizing that there are thousands of people around the world who are having the same condition but are shamefully dying in silence, hence to lose sense the need to create a platform where they can be given utmost attention, genuine care and necessary emotional support. To cater for these needs, she founded an Eresi Support Foundation, an NGO that provides emotional support and healing-focused counsel for the victims of enuresis. She has counseled and supported over 500 individuals who have been who have the bedwetting condition, and a good number of them have attested to getting better. It's an honor to have you in our studio Thank this morning. Thank you so morning. much. Welcome. Thank you so much. Okay, so I want us to start from your story. Tell me how it was, how you felt, how you were able to overcome it and turn it into something so beautiful, so much so that you are helping other people. Okay, thank you so much. Um, many years back, I used to be a victim of a neurosis mm. and um, I must say that it was a very distressful journey. Mm. It wasn't easy, you know, surrounded by people who did not even understand what was going on mm -hmm. with you. Um, as a child, I didn't really live with my mom. I, I lived with my aunt and grandma. So I could remember very well that when I stayed with my grandma, it was a home that looks like a barracks, mm -hmm. you know, having a lot of children, children. who do not bed, bed wet. So I seemed to be the only one mm -hmm. out of about 30 children who was bedwetting. So it was always a shameful thing for me every morning when I have to pack my mat, my wet clothes and all that. And um, unluckily for me, I am not someone who comes from a family where they are really learned to even think of mm. Um, of it being a medical condition, condition or even consulting a doctor. So everybody was just thinking it was a traditional or um, spiritual, spiritual thing, mm. you know. So um, I could remember also that they, they, they prescribed a lot of things back then, but they were all traditional stuff. Mm. And I ate a lot. I, I ate a lot. I drank a lot, a lot of wow. terrible things. Even though then I, I was not someone who loved to take all those things, even synthetic drugs. I'm not someone who loved drugs. Mm. But then because I was looking for freedom, I was looking for deliverance from this thing. So whatever they, whatever people prescribed or mm. they suggested, I would use them. I could remember my grandma too, coupled with my grandpa, he's late now. Mm. Um, they both had to prepare a, a traditional concussion for me to take all because of a neurosis. So the journey wasn't nice. It wasn't nice. At the point I gained admission, okay. I, I, I began to live with people. It was a terrible condition, mm, you know, at some point. And the nature of a neurosis is this. Sometimes it goes for weeks. Mm and then all of a sudden it resources. comes again. So for some weeks I was able to escape um, the shame and all that, but eventually, I mean, I mean when I first gained admission, but all of a sudden it started again. So it happened with my roommate and um, it, the rest is a story, <laughs> is a story. And it wasn't just that, it kept on happening with even other roommates that I had. It was a shameful thing for me. Mm. And then at a point also it happened with my first, um, my first fiance, let me put it that wow. way. And um, okay, let me just leave that aspect. Okay. So for me, Having to suffer in neurosis for over 20 years was, it was close to 25 years and it wasn't a nice thing. But it got to a point, I studied biology. And so at a point I, I began to wonder, I was curious, I really want to know what was happening. Because I was like, I can't keep growing like this with this condition. Is this how I'm going to live? for the rest of my life. So I had to take my research serious. I began to research deep. I was looking for ways out. That was mm -hmm. when I discovered, because all along I didn't even know it was a medical condition. condition. I was just thinking that maybe what my family members were saying was true, that probably it's a spiritual thing. So then it was then I discovered that, oh, it has a name. 
okay, there are things that could actually cause mm -hmm. it, there are things one could actually do to manage it. Mm. So it was at the point of gaining those knowledge, I mean that knowledge, yeah. that really, really helped me. So I, I always say something that um, being healed from something or, or, or being, you know, getting out of a problem actually begins with gaining the knowledge about that thing, mm. gaining knowledge about that about thing. It. So I can say that that was where my own um, solution began from. Mm. All right, so um, I also discovered during my research that aneurysis can be genetic. Mm. Meanwhile, along the line, I was told that my mom had the condition. Okay. I, I didn't grow up to know it. Mm. Of course, they only st told me the story yeah. that she had it up till about 18 years okay. before it stopped finally. So that also confirmed the fact that aneurysis can be, although it is not in all cases okay. that aneurysis is genetic. But it's, it's a possibility. It's, yes, exactly. And the fact that it is genetic does not mean that all the children that the person would have would have, it would have that condition. Mm. It may be one out of four, it may be, because for example, hi, um, we're just two, but my sister does not have the condition. In fact, okay. she never, I can't even remember the last time she, she had that, maybe okay. at age one or two, she stopped bedwetting. Mm. So that, that is my own story. Right. So after I got out of the condition, I discovered that there are many people who are silent about this about thing, it. and they are mm. fighting it. It's a bat battle under their clothes. So and I mean, that, that, that's the reason why I want to have this conversation today. <laughs> but before I go into the first question, which definitely is you educating us on what any is, is actually about and what it is, um, was your story, what, what you went through, was that what informed um, your choice of study, like biology? No. Okay. Actually, what I studied that was not actually what I wanted to study. Okay. When we started live, we wanted to be a doctor mm. or a pharmacist, yeah. but I couldn't get that. But because biology is still somehow similar to what I wanted to study, mm. so I had to go into a college of education first okay. to study education, All biology right. education, before okay. I moved on. So now let's go into aneurysis. What exactly is aneurysis? All right, so um, aneurysis is just a medical term. Mm. It's a medical word mm -hmm. used to describe a condition in which an individual is unable to control the release of urine okay. from their bladder mm. while they are asleep. Now, I always love to add that while they yes. are asleep because it's a different condition when someone have to, I mean, when someone has to mess themselves up while they are awake. While they are awake. That's mm. a different condition, actually. Okay. So, but when they do that while they are asleep, then that is aneurysis. Okay. Exactly. So, so um, are there types of yes, we, we have types of aneurysis mm -hmm. and it's not as if these types are distinct from themselves totally. Okay. Somehow they are still interwoven. So there are four basic types of aneurysis. The first okay. one is primary. Okay, two, two of them, they are just like opposite of themselves. So okay. the first category, we have the primary and secondary aneurysis. Mm -hmm. Now, when you say primary aneurysis, you mean a condition, that kind of aneurysis that has been, it has been on for that individual for a very long time. It has started with them maybe since they were young and they've never been dried consistently for maybe like two weeks. Hmm. So for every week, they were always bed wet. Maybe at least four days in a week, mm -hmm. they were always bed wet. That is primary aneurysis. Okay. It, has never, it has never stopped for a very long time. But when you come to secondary aneurysis, you're talking about that aneurysis that Probably an individual has stopped bedwetting for, let's say, six months, four months, eight months, and mm. all of a sudden, it, it happens again. Mm. That is secondary aneurysis. aneurysis. It has stopped for a while, but maybe the person did something that triggered that thing at that particular point in time. Then it comes again. Mm. That is secondary aneurysis. aneurysis. Now, the other category um, has to do with the time that it happens the time that it happens, that okay. is the second category. That's and true. there are also two as well. The first one is what we call the nocturnal aneurysis. Okay. The nocturnal aneurysis, when you say nocturnal, when you use that word, nocturnal means something that happens during the night. night. Well, when you talk of Diona, Diona has to do with something that happens during the day. Mm -hmm. So I, I believe you know that there are some children that when they sleep in the, in the day, maybe yeah. in the morning or mm -hmm. in the afternoon, they bed wet. Yeah. Well, in the night, some children also bed wet in the night. Mm -hmm. So if a child bed wets during the day, okay. that is diurnal aneurysis. Okay. While if a child or an individual, it could be an adult, bed wet during the night, that mm. is nocturnal aneurysis. Now, for some reasons, nocturnal aneurysis is quite common than diurnal, mm -hmm. meaning the one that happens during the, the night. night happens more than that of the day. Okay, can someone have both? 
Okay. Yes, that's where I'm going. Okay. Um, there, there are some people who, whether they sleep in the, in the, in the night, I mean, in the night or during the day, mm. they bed wet. Wow. They don't have a dry season or a mm. dry moment. But there are some people who only bed wet during the night. They don't bed wet during the, the day. day. Now, it is not, um, it is not common that someone bed wet um, during the during the day and does not bed wet during the night. That mm. one is not common. Okay. That someone only bed wet during the day and they don't bed, bed wet during the, the night. night. But the other one is possible. Someone can bed wet, can be a bed wetter for the night, night and, and never be a bed wetter for the day. So those are the four basic types of aneurysms. You know, see, we always hear some parents say that um, you are you are 18. You should have stopped. Or you're no longer a child. child. Why shouldn't you wake up in the night and get up and go to the bathroom if you want to use the toilet? Why are you wet in the bed? <laughs> so is there a time or a particular age that one is meant to stop? Now, one thing I would first of all like to address is the fact that parents need to understand that um, the ch a child that is bedwetting is never um, is, is never their intention to do so. Hmm. They okay. don't. Nobody deliberately bedwet. Nobody loves shame. Nobody loves disgrace. That is the truth. We have to hold that with our left hand. Now, coming back to how um, is there a particular age that someone should stop bedwetting? Actually, um, based on development, okay. it is expected that because bedwetting is actually part of growth and development, okay. so it is expected for mm -hmm. babies, infants, mm -hmm. toddlers yeah. to actually bedwet. But it is expected that at the age of six, if at the age of six your child does not stop, stop. bedwetting, then you should begin to be you concerned, be begin okay. to take steps, begin to look for ways out. And mm -hmm. you have to understand that this thing is a medical condition, and the first approach to it should be medical. Medical. Okay. I don't know because some people just go all the way to think that it is spiritual. Mm -hmm. So we have to get I that right. I it do. is I not think it's spiritual. A societal thing. Now, uh, the thing that people fail to understand is. Um, there is a lot of things going on in our body mm -hmm. that we don't really we can we cannot see with our naked okay. eyes We have to so we don't just you, you don't just say because this thing is an embarrassing thing Probably because because of the nature of this condition so people tend to attach so much stigmatization to it more mm -hmm. than because uh, Come and look at it. We, we we have other medical or health conditions yeah. that people don't Take for example hypertension mm. or diabetes. Yeah. You don't you don't come out to say that it is spiritual. Yeah. But because of the nature of this one, because of the embarrassing nature of it, okay. people can easily think that it is it is spiritual. Mm. Talking about it being embarrassing, you know when it's when it comes to children, um, they feel it's okay. I mean this person is still a child. You know probably when the person the child is past six, we start to get worried what's exactly. going on. But when it's an adult, there's this particular stigma to it and everyone yes. is wondering what's going on what so what exactly on? causes it in you know in adults, adults. No. because uh, sorry there was okay. a case study that we took talking about how someone said i think is it she or he's there but at the end of 28. so what exactly causes it now most people who are adult victims of mm -hmm. aneurysis they actually started bedwetting as a child. Mm -hmm. Most people. Mm -hmm. It is only very few people that started bedwetting all of a sudden mm -hmm. without being a bedwetter when they were a child. A child okay. It's only few people. Now for those people, because I've actually read a case like that too, that a 26 year old guy just started bedwetting all of a sudden. He couldn't even remember the last time he bedwetted before that time. Oh. So he was surprised. Now the truth is, this thing is just like every other health condition. Okay. It can come up at any time. Now, but for someone to have it all of a sudden, it means number one, the person has a tendency. And having the tendency means it is possible the person is carrying the gene. And probably it is a recessive gene, not the dominant gene. If it is not the dominant one, it is possible that it doesn't happen when the person is a child hmm. and only surface when he or she has already become, I mean, become an adult. adult. So, but that being said, um, for adults, generally, one of the things that cause um, adult bedwetting, yeah. number one, if the bedwetting was not properly taken care of when the person was a child. Okay. Now, there's something we call Potty, potty, potty training. training. Yes, yeah. it is a very, um, a very important call on every parent, especially mm. the mother, okay. to take potty training very seriously. It mm. is very important because there is a particular age that potty training works. Okay. If you miss that stage, it is going to be a war for you to actually. What stage is it? 
Okay, for some children, um, because the, 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 the age in which a child is ready for potty training differs as well. It okay. differs from child to, to child. child. Okay. Some children are ready to be potty trained at two, mm -hmm. at three. I think the common one is three. Okay. Now, when you start potty training at three or let's say two, mm -hmm. it is expected that at age four, Usually it spans for two years okay. or thereabouts. So it's expected at age four, your child should be able to use the toilet perfectly by themselves. Mm. And one of the things, because there are children, I know children that they will be pressed and they would say the potty, they are pressed, but they can't really relate. Mm. They, they, they don't know the relationship between what they are feeling, feeling and that potty. Okay. So you see them mess themselves up. Mm. That means that child has not been properly potty trained. Mm. So another one, one thing, one of the things, I mean, one of the reasons why most mothers fail in this is because mm -hmm. sometimes, and I understand, it's not really totally their, their, their fault. Sometimes some mothers are lazy. Mm -hmm. They cannot get up in the night because mm -hmm. it is part of potty training. You have to, when your child is an infant or a toddler, maybe age three, four, you have to make it a point of duty to always wake the boys that child lazy, up. Though. Some of them are actually just That is why tired. I said, that's why I said we cannot mm -hmm. really totally put the blame on them, on them because yeah. they, they've also gone through a lot during exactly. the day so we can say that it's in as much as it is the responsibility of the, of the mother, mother the father or any other person that you can actually take up that duty as well yes mm. so the point is that if potty training is missed at a proper stage okay. it can actually be a problem in future that mm. is one now secondly there are a lot of reasons why bedwetting happen another thing is small size of the bladder Okay. which is something we don't explore. Hmm. We don't really think about, about it. it. Now, when we say small size of the bladder, the, the, the size of the bladder is not in its structural size, like, oh, this is how big it is, or this is how small the bladder is. No. The size of the bladder is in its capacity. How much urine can this bladder hold? How much urine, how long can it, you know, actually hold a certain mm -hmm. volume of urine? Now, for, for children, um, I think their bladder should be able to hold between 200 and 250, or let me say 200 and 300 mil of urine. Mm -hmm, okay. While for adults, it's usually between 350 mil to 450 mil. Now, for some people, especially those with the tendency of a neurosis, they usually have problem with that. So for an adult that is expected, that the bladder is expected to hold up to 400 or 450 mil of urine, mm -hmm. you find out that once the urine is around 300 mil, or 250 mil, the person begins to get this urge to urinate. Yeah. And that is why you notice that there are some people who use, who use the toilet too often. Hmm. Sometimes every one, one hour. And, and I want you to know that there are some people who don't have any uses, but they, they have something we call urgency. All those things are signs that the person is prone Mm. to enuresis. Okay. And that is why all of a sudden someone of 28 years old will just realize that they bed wet. Mm -hmm. It may never have happened since, you know, but all of a sudden it happens. It's because they've not really paid attention. Th those are, that is one of the things that I began to pay attention to. Mm. When I was then I discovered that, oh, I actually have a small bladder. Mm. And I, I tend to use the toilet very, Frequently. very often. Mm -hmm. Sometimes two, two hours, and then you wonder. Yes, forget the fact. I know that in some situation when you are, um, when the, when the weather is cold, when the weather is cold, almost everybody tends to use the toilet often. But for people who have the tendency of enuresis, their own is more. Hmm. Whether in a cold condition or not, they okay. use the toilet frequently. Mm. So small size of the bladder is another is okay. thing okay. that can cause it. So let me take a cue from what you just said. So okay. I, I, can we also say, because most times you hear parents or people say that because People drink too much water when it's close to bedtime. To bedtime. You know, that's what causes it. And for, some, for someone that has probably a small bladder and takes a lot of water close to bedtime, can that also be? Caused? It is actually one of the triggers. Okay. Now, uh, when people say don't take too much of water, I always say that there is a strategy to it. Mm -hmm. Because the fact that somebody has a neurosis does not mean the person should cut down water intake totally. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing is, Somebody who bed wet mm. really need a lot of water still. Okay. They need a lot. Their system needs a, lo a lot of water. water. Reason being that, you see, there are, in our bladder, the wall of the bladder is lined with a lot of muscles. Okay. The major one is called the detrusor. This detrusor is like the major muscle that, um, that, that, that controls the, um, the push, um, the, 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 what is it called now? The, the, outflow okay. of urine okay. when the bladder is ready to actually void. Mm. So this muzzle is responsible for that. So 
there are some substances that we take into our body that may make these muscles to become hyperactive. Mm. And that is what happens when we say um, small size of the bladder because bladder. it is actually the muscles, the overactivity of the muscles that make the bladder to behave as mm -hmm. a small bladder. Okay. So when, okay, I was talking about water. Yes. That when, when people with bed wet, they need more water because their bladder actually needs to be, to be purified of some of the substances that make the muscles of the bladder to be mm. hyperactive. So they need more water. water. And another thing is that constipation causes bed wetting. Okay. Frequent constipation. constipation. I'm going to talk about that. Mm. But let me quickly see, let me, let me quickly tell you how um, the constipation links up with the water intake. Mm. So when somebody who bed wet takes enough water, it is going to help their bowel movement. Okay. It is going to um, clear the large intestine of the indigested mm. food that is locked up there. Mm. And the bladder and the large intestine, they are closed. Yes. So if the large in intestine becomes bulky with undigested food, mm -hmm. it places pressure on the bladder. It places pressure, pressure on the bladder, and then the bladder loses control, mm. not allowing it to hold urine for the period of time it is supposed yeah, to so hold it. it. Like, mm. So it just flows out. Mm. So now what I say about the, the, the water intake strategy is this. As a bedwetter, try as much as possible to take enough water during the day. Okay. You can gauge it mm. probably every three. For adults, I say every three, three hours, take at least maybe like 500 ml of water. I think our sachet water is 500 ml. Mm. So when you take that every three, three hours, the moment it is 5 p.m. or 6 p.m., try to stop the heavy intake of water. water. Any moment from that time, I mm. expect you to just sip. Exactly. You don't so just I, go I, I would down say that is water. one measure one can take, like a treatment. But I want to go into the treatment now. Okay, so, yes. Um, and that, that is like one that you've just said. Yes. Watch the amount the of, water of water that you take exactly. close to bedtime. Yes. So what other measure is there? Okay. Another thing is that since I said constipation, you know I said constipation is yes. one of the, one of the um, reasons that bedwetting mm. happens. You have to watch the amount of food you eat. Okay. Now, I know that most parents do capitalize on, oh, you eat too, too much, much, you drink yeah. too much of water and all that. It doesn't mean that you have to starve the child mm. or something. But try as much as possible to, you know, our stomach size differs. And you can't feed, you can't feed child A the, the way you feed way child you feed, B. Yeah. So you have to watch how, how much food does this child's stomach Take. Mm -hmm. So you have to watch that and give that child, I mean, food according to the size of his mm. or stomach. And another thing about food is try to also watch the combination of food you do. Okay. Don't do, don't combine foods that will be two foods that are difficult to digest. Mm. When you do that, you're going to affect the bladder because the large intestine end, uh, end up, uh, ends up becoming bulky, bulky. with undigested food and mm. then it affects the bladder again. Okay, so this so measures that is another apply measure. to both children both and adults? Both children and adults, okay. yes. Mm. Because constipation happens to both children and adults, mm. so you, you have to watch that. Watch it, okay. All right. So I, I, um, I think another thing that causes a neurosis mm. that we need to talk about okay. is urinary tract infection. In fact, oh, this is that. like the number one mm. thing um, I was at Metro FM some weeks back, mm. and a man called while we were on the show. He said, ah, what this person is saying is true, that he had the condition for like 38 years. Mm. And it was until he discovered that he had UTI. Mm. UTI is urinary tract, yeah. tract infection. Mm -hmm. And it was until he treated that before his bedwetting condition stopped. So the first thing I do tell people is, please, when you're having bedwetting, especially children mm. too do have UTI. Yeah. So the first thing you should do, try to run a UTI test. Test. Mm. Try to do that. It is very exactly. Like, Don't assume things on your own. And for most people, the moment they do that and they find out, find out they mm. have and they treat it, they become better. I mean, see, one of the things that I picked from all the case studies that we, we treated, uh, and uh, from what you said earlier, when I asked you about your story, is the stigma that is tied to this. Exactly. Why is there so much stigma tied to this? How can we, um, how can we cop this? How can we be better so members of the society? Yes. How can we be kinder? to people. Okay, I, I think that is one of the things that motivated me to start this journey okay. because I, I know what I went through and I felt like nobody should be going through this. Mm -hmm. It is terrible. Mm. Yes, maybe luck, a bit luckily for me, I, some of the people that 
um, that, were, that were outsiders that got to know about my about story. Or maybe it happened to them while I slept with them. Okay. They happened to be Christian and somehow mm. religiously they just mm. had to take it like that. But then, see, no matter how, no matter how accommodating people around you are, the person who is bedwetting will always be very sad. Yeah. That is the truth. So, as a society, we have to understand that beyond the physical effect of this condition, a bedwetter is going through a lot mentally. Mm. They are going through a lot. Yeah. I, for one, I suffered lack of concentration in the class. Most of my lectures, you know, I would be seated and wow. I would just be far away, thinking about and no one ways. noticed. I tried as much as possible to keep it. Hmm. Now, another thing that helped me was I didn't stay in the hostel. Okay. I mean, the school hostel, hostel it would have been worse. I can imagine. It would have been worse. Hmm. So, as a society, we need to understand, understand the pains of these people, their needs. I do say it over and over again that please, if you know any bedwetter, mm. the first thing you should know is that it is not their it's fault. Not, yeah. Mm. They are not intentionally doing it. And, it's not easy and on what them. they need is help. Yeah. So if you have any useful information you, you would likely share with them, please do. Yeah. That means you do. also you have to be informed. And that's the reason why exactly. we're doing this. Exactly. And yeah. that is why we're doing this. Mm. So we all have to, to be informed. People don't know. There are still people currently that do not know that any, I mean, bedwetting is a medical condition. condition. Hmm. So and until we get to that point of knowing, to hmm. that point of knowledge, we cannot help those who are in that condition. Hmm. I must thank you so much for enlightening us more on adult bedwetting. And before you go, there's a question I was throwing with my co-presenter, Ade. Okay. I, was, I said I was going to ask you. Okay. You know, there's one thing that happens uh, that we hear most times when people are sick, that it happens to, you know, they say, they were, uh, they had a dream, I love you know, that question. where <laughs> they were dreaming that they were in the toilet and it, it seemed so real. And then they opened their eyes and realized that, oh, <laughs> it was a dream and they are actually bedwetting. So yeah. why? Is uh, there a logical I'm explanation? So, I'm so eager to answer that question okay. because um, that is one thing that happened to me so much. Hmm. It happened so much when I was still battling with a neurosis. Okay. If you're a bedwetter, like a regular bedwetter, and you tell me you don't dream, it's mm. a lie. <laughs> wow. It's a lie. Most of the times, you just realize that probably you're in the midst of your friends, yeah. and you feel pressed. And you tell them, please, I just want to ease myself over there. You stand up yourself, you use your legs to walk, walk. and you, you know, stoop down, stoop down, and then you do your thing conveniently, comfortably. Mm. And it's just at a point where the last drop is dropping. You realize that's when you just wake up and you realize mm. it's a dream. And you see that it's actually, it's actually happened on your bed. Mm. Now, there's something we call sleep disorder. Okay. And there are a lot of sleep disorders that affect bedwetters. Okay. One of them is deep sleep. Okay. I don't know. Deep sleep um, happens to be one of the sleep disorders that affects bladder control. Okay. It affects the coordination between the brain and the bladder. Mm. Now, deep sleep goes beyond just sleeping well. Mm. You, know, you can sleep well and feel good. That's not deep sleep. Mm. Deep sleep is a, a stage of sleep where when you try to wake the individual up, in fact, your, your palm will suffer before that person wakes up. Wow. That is deep sleep. deep sleep. And it's a disorder that needs to be dealt with. Okay. So I think probably when um, someone that has it, um, six medical con medical help this can also come into the treatment and the process exactly and, I, and, and i'm going to make if you permit me okay. let me just quickly All brush right, through it now um like i said deep sleep affects the coordination between the brain and mm. the blood and we have to understand that before the blood sh can void there should there must be a message from there are some nerves below our spinal cord okay. that once the bladder feels feels pressed mm. it takes a message through the spinal cord to the brain. To the brain. Now the brain mm -hmm. interprets it and then takes message back to back. the bladder and tell the bladder that okay, it is okay to void. Mm -hmm. It is okay to release the urine. Now, what deep sleep does is this. Once you sleep deep, yeah. a part of your brain has been depressed. Mm -hmm. A part of your brain that is responsible for that message, message. has been depressed. So. The brain, it's either the brain gets the, the message mm. and then it is unable to send back the necessary message. Mm. So you as a person does not feel it. So while you are sleeping deep, psychologically, I, can, I, I may not really be able to picture that for us, okay. but psychologically, 
the body picks up what is happening to you in the physical and then set up a drama hmm. around it around and it. brings it into to your you. dream realm. Wow. So you see it as a dream, you feel like using the toilet, mm -hmm. you go ahead and use the toilet and it's just at the point of finishing the, <laughs> the stuff. That is when you wake I mean, up. Thank you, and then you so you much. It. So, so one of the things that we use in correcting that mm -hmm. because deep sleep need, really needs to be dealt with yeah. if you're a bedwetter. So well, there's something I call the strange alarm system. Mm -hmm. Now, many people have come to me and say, alarm system, and the alarm clock is not working, I've been using it, it's not working, this okay. and that. And then I tell them two things. It is either you're using the wrong alarm clock, or you're not using it well. Mm. Now, there are some alarm clocks, there is this alarm clock, very small alarm clock like this, that mm. gives this ta-ta-ta-ta, ta-ta-ta-ta mm. sound. Yeah, if you're using one. that for bedwetting, you're not ready yet. You have to use one that is loud enough. There is a particular, I don't, make you jump I, up I don't think I'm bed. here with it. Yes. So there is a particular alarm clock that is kind of specific mm. and okay for bed for that is one you have to get that now okay. secondly mm. you don't just set your alarm clock to ring once in um, in the night you have to time it you have to make your alarm clock ring regularly mm. at least like four times before the day breaks mm. that is how it works you know what and the last thing I'm going to say <laughs> okay. is that you have to be consistent okay you have to be consistent yeah, I mean. and don't give up mm. I was an alarm clock for about four years Wow I didn't give up it became a pattern for me like my lifestyle became part of me so I set my alarm to ring six times in the night hmm. from 12 a.m. to 6 a.m. Yeah. and I left it permanently like that yeah and that helped you and it's really helped me it was hmm. one of the things that helped me hmm. so an alarm clock has actually been has, has also been um, how is it called medically and scientifically proven, proven. Hmm. to okay. work for bedwetting okay. so you don't joke with it it joke. actually works Thank you so it much, Solu Joseph. I mean, I could sit here and listen to you talk and educate <laughs> me, but I know time is not on our side, but I, I must <laughs> thank you so, so much thank for you sharing so. this. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people listening have learned a lot and know how to handle cases like this better and not just attribute it to spiritual problems exactly. or there's one village person that's following you. That is disturbing me. <laughs> no, it is a medical condition, condition and it needs to be treated as such. Seek for help. Know the cause your triggers and how to treat it and then you are good to go and the stigma has to stop thank it you has so to much stop. thank, thank you, you so much, so much. i'm also glad to be here thank you for giving me this platform my pleasure <laughs>